What's up guys, Eugene Stay here. Today, we're back again, and in this video, we are going to be playing some Nautilus in the jungle. So, I thought I recorded this match live, and I guess I did, but it just didn't save. So, we're gonna have to watch it through this replay, but this was such a good match that I thought I had to show you all this. So, this will be my sixth episode in the Solo Q to Grandmaster series. And for this match, we're gonna be playing some Nautilus in the jungle. And we're gonna start off clearing these um, raptors over here. And I'm actually not exactly true for what the perfect um, Nautilus jungle clear is. I think this works really well just because look at that damage. Look at how fast I cleared this camp. Um, I played this champ last time like over a year ago, so it has been a hot minute. But um, look at how fast you clear that. With your second ability, you get so much attack speed and AoE damage that you can clear that so, so fast. So I think it's actually better to start off with that. But to talk about the reason why I wanted to play Nautilus in this match, it's because look at the enemy jungler. They have a Xin Zhao. And if you've watched my channel for a while, you know one of my favorite champs to play into Xin Zhao is, um, it is Jarvan. And the reason for that is because Xin Zhao relies a lot on his personas. Ooh, let's see. All oh, this Blitzcrank's looking for a pull. Okay, nice. But yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and clear these camps over here. Um, ooh, that's a great route from our Lux. There's the pull. Oh, it looks like they should still be able to get that. Good job from Ash. Oh, they might actually die. Let's see, I'm gonna, I'm trying to head up there, but it looks like they got the hang of that. So I was on my way to rotate up there, or else the jungle kill that you could do with Nautilus is, um, I'm probably, I should just go and grab Scuttle. Um, the jungle clear that I like to do with Nautilus is you start off with these raptors, you grab the bread, you do the wolves, and then you do the blue, and then you can go for Scuttle and look for a gank or whatever. And your jungle clear is super fast, so you'll still be at the Scuttle by around 125 as it's spawning. Um, let's see, this Twist of Fate's looking for a stun. And the reason for that is just because your jungle clear is so, so fast with Nautilus. But... Uh, as I was saying, I really wanted to play this champ into Xin Zhao because one of my favorite champs to play into Xin Zhao is Jarvan. Unfortunately, Jarvan was banned here. And the reason for that is because Xin Zhao relies on a lot of early game burst damage and late game burst damage. That's, his, that's essentially what a strong suit is, is being able to burst down squishies. And if you play a champ like Evelyn, Lee Sin, or something into Xin Zhao, it's really easy for... Um, oh, let's see. I think we can actually pick up a kill here able to get the hook let's see we can start rooting them looks like that jinx able to get them to oh can we get the splits crank over here i do have my ult now i just got level five we can root them again nice and we're able to pick that up so that's good that's just the power of um nautilus once you get level five it's so so easy to look for ganks and that's the reason why i just do four camp jungle clear because once you take these four camps over here and then you look for scuttle or whatever you have so many options you can either go back to forming gromp or something or you can look for a gank and it's not a champ which you have to power farm till level 5, because some champs like um, Evelyn, I think Rengar are similar, where you kind of need level 5 to do a lot of effective ganks. But for Nautilus, because you have your first ability, you really don't have to. So it looks like this Jin Zhao is able to pick up a couple kills there. It looks like he might actually go down. Um, I was actually probably pinging my teammates that um, Jin Zhao was going to be back. And let's see, I'm trying to ping this Twisted Fate. Let's see, can we get this kill over here? We're able to knock him up able to pick that up and that's great and one of the best champs i think twist of fate is one of the best champs to pair, pair nautilus up with and the reason for that is because pairing nautilus with other crowd controlling champs makes it so so easy for you to land your ability because you saw how you saw there how once twist of fate landed their gold card it becomes so easy for me to um land my hook and this jin Zhao, you can see him trying to burst me down he does do a good amount of damage but he's not able to knock me down fast enough and i'm able to have this teemo rotate over and that's why it's so, so key to keep an eye on your side lane. So the reason why I stayed in that fight was because I was able to see that um, my Teemo has the advantage in this lane. So if a fight breaks out over here, this Teemo will be able the one that's able to rotate, whereas the um, Gnosis won't really be able to do anything. So I knew he hadn't taken his blue buff yet because he didn't have the blue buff on him when I killed Xin Zhao. So we can go ahead and take this over here. You can see him over there with the Twisted Fate ult. Let's see and try and land a knock up in a root. Look at that, see, just three crowd controls in a row and there's nothing Annie can do about that. They had flash up, you see how they, they still had flash up, but the thing is, is as soon as you get hit by one of those, as soon as you get knocked up on my first ability and then rooted, you can't flash out of it. So unless you flash in that split second before I use my first ability, it's really hard to escape. 
And I'm paying it to my teammates that Jin Zhao is going to be up here. And the reason for that is because I know that he, and his entire blue side is down. And his, reset, his red side is respawning right now. So it's only logical that he's kind of on this side of the map. So this lane does need to keep an eye out. Um, but yeah, we're just farming up a bit. We're getting a reset and then we'll head towards an objective fight. Let's see, I'm able to get my Lich Bane, have my boots, and that's a really, really strong. And as you can see, Jin Zhao is over here. And the reason for that is because you know his... um. So as soon as his blue buff is like respawns and is taken then his red side is respawning you can kind of that's an easier way to track jungle is to just track which side of the map they're on like you don't have to exactly track exactly where they are but just knowing that if they just took their blue buff then their red side will be respawning and if they just took their red buff then they're gonna be moving towards their blue side that's just very very basic stuff but look at this clear from nautilus i think this is one of the things that makes nautilus such a strong tank jungler is you have such good jungle clear and I don't know if he accidentally clicked that or if he saw me there. Um, yeah, I don't think they nod. Oh, that's a great boot. Let's see, we can knock him up. Able to stun him nice, nice. We can get that. Oh, if I can get in. I still have my ults if I need to. Dang. We should be able to go for this objective now. Or oh, none of my teammates going to come over here? I don't think they're going to come over here. Unfortunate. Yeah, I still had my ult if I needed to. I could have started that fight off with my ult, but I knew I didn't really have to burn it. But you can kind of see the power of Nautilus in terms of... It counters Jin Zhao because you can't burst it. That's what, that's what makes Jarvan so good into Jin Zhao also. Is because both Nautilus and Jarvan, they gain a shield from one of their abilities, from their second abilities. And that negates a lot of early game burst damage, and it makes it so Jin Zhao just can't burst you down. So he can't really catch you out as easily. Now don't get me wrong, Jin Zhao is still strong. Like, if he gets an engage on you, I wouldn't I wouldn't go for a complete 1v1. But the thing is, is as you move later into the game, what Jin Zhao turns into is a tank. That's his like job in the late game. It's just acting tanky for his teammates. But the thing is, is Nautilus is a significantly better tank in the late game. So you can pretty much out-tank Nautilus, or you can out-tank Jin Zhao in every form possible. And I don't think that Twisted Fate really had to ult there, like, me and the Teemo kind of had that kill. I had my ultimate too, so I, my ultimate would have gotten him. But, if I can grab this Herald over here. Somebody should, yeah, they should go and defend mid. I can take this by myself. I'm able to get that. Um, I'm gonna keep an eye on their buffs, the side's respawning. I'm assuming Jin Zhao will, might show up around here. Let's see, yeah, this Gnosis is overstepping. That's a pretty good engage. Sometimes if there are minions in the way and stuff of your first ability, what you could do is you can start off with your ult and then... Okay, yes. Yeah, what you could do is you can start off with your ultimate if the minions are all in the way, and then as soon as that um, ult hits, and as soon as the knockup finishes, just run up to him and auto him. That's all you have to do. As you can see, that was all I did there. And it just crowd controlled them for a little bit, and then Teemo was able to follow up, and then if they flashed or tried, or tried to run away... I could just first ability them. That's something I think a mistake a lot of people make is they feel like you have to start off your um you have to start off your engages all the time with your first ability. It's like no, nah, sometimes your ult is just easier to start it off with. Because it's a point and click ult, it's like you don't have to aim it or anything. As soon as you see them, you just press it and they get knocked up. And that makes it so easy for you to land your passive route. Let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna have to flash out of that. There's a lot of burst over there. Yeah, no, I need to get a shop in. I have 3,300 gold on me. Um, so for this game, I actually tried out something different. Um, I'm trying to go for AP Nautilus, so pretty much, like, full AP. Um, if you know me, like, the style that I prefer is actually probably a hybrid version where you have a bit of AP and then you go, like, Sunfire Ages tank kind of thing. Um, but I thought I'd change it up this game see what's different so i'm able to land a good auto there root him up and then i just ult him and i still had my first ability too so i could have knocked him up a third time if i needed to but we're able to get that and i'm telling you the damage from this ap nautilus this game was crazy i was not expecting it at all the thing is is nautilus just has so much base damage and his third and second ability are both so so good they're such good abilities that um even if you don't build a lot of ap it still does a good amount of damage there's so many games where You'll see support Nautiluses, full tank Nautiluses, um, deal 
some of the most amount of damage on their team. And it's just because of those abilities. So as you can see, Jin Zhao, he's trying to get onto me. He's actually able to kill me here with the help of the enemy, unfortunately. But that's mostly because I'm just building full AP this game. If I had even a little bit of tank, he wouldn't really be able to delete me like that. So that is the thing, if you do choose to go full AP Nautilus, don't expect to be a mega tank. And we'll see that in this game where like, there are times where I can get bursted down just because I don't have the health items, I don't have the defense items that a normal like other kind of Nautilus tank or hybrid would have. Um, so I'll definitely do another video on a hybrid Nautilus on a good, um... oh whoa, Lux is going crazy there. That's a great Ash era, but... Oh, please don't step up. Nice. If, if Ash stepped up too much and NASA slowed him and then Blitz pulled him, they would have been dead. Let's see, I'm on the way over. I have even more damage. Oh, I'm trying to figure out what this, um... The little, like, hex mini flash thing. Um, that's something that um, wasn't in the game last time I played, so... I was trying to figure out how it kind of worked, but... This is kind of... We gotta be a little bit careful here. Teemo has to be careful getting pulled. I'm letting Teemo poke down a bit, and as soon as Teemo gets some damage down, then I can engage over here. So we're able to get that. I'm able to ult them and pick up both of those kills. And you can see how sometimes you just have to love have... A, I cannot talk right now. You just have to have a little bit of patience with these tank, tankier crowd control champs. I'm trying to get over here in time so I can contest this. Um, I actually don't have smite up, so I choose to just run him down instead, instead of um, trying to take a smite battle, just because without smite, I don't know if he added up or not. So we're able to pick up those kills, and something that I was mentioning is um, if you are playing tank, you really have to be wary of the teammates around you. One of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of tank players make is they just impulsively always engage. And that was a pretty bad engage right there. Um, let's see, we should be able to pick up this blitz over here. Nice, look at those autos chunking down even the blitz. You can ult the Annie, knock him off, root him, and get out of there. Oh, this Jinx, oh, they had vision of me. Oh, whoa, I did not see that Jin Zhao there. Yikes. Yeah, Jin Zhao just respawned and came back and got me. That's unfortunate. But you can see the damage from AP Nautilus. It's like I'm chunking down pretty much everybody with one combo, which is completely crazy. But as I was saying, one of the biggest mistakes I see a lot of tank players make is they feel like they always have to engage. Sometimes it's okay to sit back and let your backline do the work. So when you're playing with certain champs, like in this case, like we have a Teemo, we have a Lux, if you're playing with like a Ziggs or something, sometimes it's okay to just stand next to them and let them do their poke. And sometimes that's what you need. If you play, um, if you play any of these like AD or like AP mages, things like that, you know one of the worst things, one of the worst feelings is when your tank just engages when you aren't in position and you aren't ready. So sometimes it's better as a tank player to just sit around your teammates. And what you could do is, if I was just sitting next to Twist of Fate, I don't necessarily have to do anything. I could just let Twist of Fate poke. But what I could do is, if they get engaged on, I can help my Twist of Fate peel. So I can help them kite backwards. Um, and I'm back over here, but we should be able to get this. I don't want to waste ult on this if I don't have to. Nice, that first ability was able to pick him up. Um, but as I was saying, sometimes it's okay to just stand here. That way, if they get engaged on, I can just root them and keep on kiting back. I can ult them so my teammates can keep on kiting back. Sometimes that's okay. And you kind of just have to gauge. If you could tell your teammates are looking for an angle, it's like, give them some time, you know? They aren't going to land every single ability, but it depends on the case. I mean, of course, if you see, like, an opening that you can't resist, like, yeah, go for it, but... I'm saying sometimes, I unfortunately took that Nexus did a lot of damage, but I can't tell, did I surrender? I think so, because I don't think we destroyed it, but if y'all enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe if you did, um, especially if y'all want a hybrid Nautilus video, um, do comment down below, and I'll for sure get that out to y'all. But yeah, that's going to be about it for this video, um, you can see I did so much damage, Nautilus. Um, so, so dirty. And especially if the, 